What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to Wrenching Wrecked. We've been playing around on Harleys, ripping around the Evo, ripping around the chopper. Both run fantastic. No complaints. Still need to fix the gas cap on this thing. The only issue I had on this after doing the bar and riser swap temporarily, I'm still working on the gauges, but that'll be another video, just extending some wires and things. This stupid chrome cover gas cap locks in, but it rattles around like crazy. Drives me nuts. Thought it was something in the front end or a bushing or the tack cable or speedo drive, I mean. It's not, it's the gas cap. So only thing left to fix on that and then gauges if I decide to put them back on, which will happen eventually, but I'm not really in any rush. But we're out here for the moped today. So it's been, it's probably been about a week since I've been out here. I know I had a ton of videos coming out, but haven't really been wrenching on anything. It was a very busy week last week. Usually when I get a car in at the shop, it's a rush job, drop everything. I'm up there working late trying to get a car done because people like having their cars. And uh, I can't sit on those when they're up on the lift, taking up a bunch of shop space. And it's a late night scramble. So got that Audi all done and left and picked up. So now we got time to jam this thing back together. So where we left off and I gotta kind of remember here, this side's all done on the gears and the clutch bell, but we need to put the clutch in and the little fingers for the starter clutch engagement dealio, these little guys, springs and things. So we'll get this buttoned up. We got the plate put back together. I just gotta clean this top. Then this will drop back on here. We gotta figure out how the cl clutch cable is gonna rehook up into this. I don't remember how that was routed before. And I don't remember if I brought a clutch cable back. So we'll get the clutch basket done and then we go over to the ignition side, which isn't too bad. We got two bolts for the ignition on the stator and then the magneto wheel. I don't even know where anything is. Oh, I dropped everything in there. So all the hardware and stuff is in there. Get that put back on. It's two bolts on the base plate and then the big nut that holds this on. I don't have the Woodruff key. I don't know if it came with one, but that magneto is tapered. You want the magne or you want the Woodruff key to make sure that that's locked in place. I don't have a Woodruff key, so I might. I have one more parts order I got to put in. Small little odds and ends. From little pieces here and there, and they're running a 15% sale on treatland.tv if you end up with one of these old mopeds. Treatland has a ton of parts. Um, there's a couple sites out there now, but that's usually my main go-to. So maybe we'll wait for the Woodruff key. I haven't decided yet. Or we can just, it is a press fit once it's nutted on, but mm, We'll see on that one. If I have the patience to wait a couple days for shipping, then we can throw the ignition on and lock down the... We can get the base plate on and that all assembled and the wiring in. Then we can start doing all the wiring and then we just have the magnet to pop back on and then the four bolts for the outside cover. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. Then the top end, it looks like it's done, but it is not. We just have a bare rod in here, so the piston and rings are still in the box. Those will go back on. Then we'll actually regasket this because there's no base gasket or head gasket on here. Exhaust needs a gasket. Just final odds and ends. I drew up a wiring diagram. I'll go through that on how to hardwire these just to get it running. Um, you got three wires out of the magneto. You got, uh, what do we got here? Your blue wire goes to your brake light switches. So on the Italian ones, like Minarelli's and Gorelli's, if your brake light bulb is dead or busted, or you have a loose connection up top and you don't have a finished circuit, it will not make spark. Safety thing, maybe. I don't really know why they ran it that way, but... You got a black wire, black goes to your coil, yellow is your accessory power slash lights, and blue is your taillight brake light circuit. Since we're not running brake lights, not legally required in Illinois, uh, just a taillight is all you need. If you ground the blue wire, you're basically bypassing that entire circuit, closing that system. If this is grounded, basically yellow for lights, black for spark, and it should make sparky sparks, in theory. So we'll get that laid out, put in, and then we'll go through some of the other stuff, but I really just wanna finish up that clutch side first. 
I'm rambling. Let's get started on some work. We got the clutch basket back in. I took the outside nut off and the star hub out because this is what we got to work on. Make sure you remember your little star washer. A lot of times it'll like to stick to the back of this, especially if there's any oil in there. You need that little spacer. Then on the outside, you got a thin washer and a nut. Make sure not to lose those when you drop them. And our clutch. Where can I put you where you're not in my way? So on the clutch, we got this set up on the pressure plate side. This now will drop into here. And we have the little fingers for the yellow ducky clutch set up from treats. What did I say? Stevens Engineering, I think, is making these. So if you remember or have been following the build, the earlier versions of these are supposed to be soft rubber. They ended up being um, hard plastic over years of use. So we will drop these down on the little fingers. Oh, come on. Make sure you slide these all the way down and I'm hoping that this fits in now. Should. There are six of them. Ooh. Doesn't help when everything's covered in oil. These go around the little fingers, like so. Make sure they're seated all the way at the bottom because there is a groove for a snap ring on the inside of this, which we'll go over when we get a little bit farther. Six of the little rubber rollers, and then you have one, two, three. So these, this inner triangle here of bigger sized ones, those do not need the adjuster or the bushing. And we'll drop this into here. Oh, come on. There's an alignment, and I didn't do that. So we gotta make sure when we drop the star hub in, it's gonna line up with the holes. So if you look, all of these rollers, so the other option is to put the bushings in, put the plate on, and then put your clutch on the outside. But we're gonna try and just adjust and make this work. As I spin this around, so I need to go that way just a bit. Let's do it this way. This will be easier. So that's going to go on there like so. So we got the rollers in and the clutch. We'll drop in onto here that and I'll stretch the clutch now that I got that lined up it's kind of a pain to have a, a screwdriver or something a little there we go much easier doing it that way when I'm not trying to hold it in place That'll sit just like that. Oh, come on. Make sure you remember your star washer spacer in the back that I just dropped. And then we have our clutch assembly. Killing me today. Forgetting things, doing things backwards. Also doesn't help when you've left this thing alone for as long as I have. And we got our clutch spring, then our pressure plate. We'll just go straight to final assembly, I guess. Like so. So there's your engagement there. Got the star washer on the back side. Now, I should drop in. And this is where it gets a little tricky. We have the clutch on the spring with the pressure plate. This will drop in 
Ooh, I don't have a front wheel on this. I gotta be careful. Hmm. Then those teeth on the inside, this will compress, and this gets the snap ring. Do I wanna put the front wheel back on? Uh, or we could just do it this way and hope that it doesn't fall. No guarantees. This could become very entertaining television. All for free. Unless you guys want to uh, do me the favor of clicking that subscribe button. This costs you nothing and you might get to watch me drop a bike. be a two-person job. Let's see. Probably have some sort of tool for this too, but we don't have it. Oh, you're gonna fight me, aren't you? Way too early in the morning for this. It's like 5 30, 6 o'clock. All right, let me mess with this for a minute. I wonder if I can drop this in first. Okay, so basically, I don't know how long this is going to take, so I might cut this out. Compress the spring, lock this in place, get the snap ring in. I might actually be better off doing this on the bench here and then we'll just drop the whole clutch assembly back in after, since everything's lined up now. And I think, I put a socket here. Okay. I can compress this much more by hand on the bench. And then we just drop the snap ring in. We'll try it and see if I got enough hand strength here. So you do want to make sure your bushings are all the way down. A couple of these crept up on me. Huh. All right, so snap ring pliers do make that much easier. Who would have thought the right tool uh, makes that much easier to install. So now we have our clutch and our pressure plate on the spring, locked in. So if you come around to the backside, we got the star washer on here, the spring in the center. Oh, that's not gonna work either. Hmm. <laughs> Sweet. Anybody wanna tell me what I forgot? I know what I did. How smart are you? There we go. What needs to get bolted down first, folks? Unfortunately. I'm being an idiot and not thinking things through. So, we need to put the clutch on the bike. <laughs> Duh. So put the washer in, get our clutch bolt here. And then we get to wrestle all of this in on the bike. So my easier method doesn't really work since the clutch gets bolted in on the inside. your spring goes on, then your pressure plate, and this is where I might actually need a dotty helper, but I'm not going to wake her up this early because that would ruin my entire day, I think. She doesn't like doing things 
bright and early in the morning. Oh, snap ring pliers for the win. So I think we got most of them. I don't think they're all in yet. There we go. So make sure it actually snaps and engages fully in all of these grooves. There we have it. So now, we have a working clutch. And for those of you that don't necessarily know much about these, which is, I'm guessing quite a bit, since it's not really the most common. I'm just gonna get this back enough to... Oh, I can't do that either. Oh, well. No front wheel. Normally with the front wheel on, I can spin the back. It's fine, it'll still work, but uh, the back wheel is gonna rub on the bench a little bit, but if you pedal this, because I do have the drive chain hooked up, if we pedal this, it free spins, or it should free spin. Did we do something wrong here? not working proper. In theory, this should free spin on its own. I'm wondering if I should have oiled up that clutch. Um, it should free spin in the forward direction. And then, like the cranks are gonna free spin backwards, but if this is driving forward, now the crank has engaged, or the gear is engaged inside the trans, this should not be rotating the clutch. Hmm. All right, more investigating. Okay, so I yanked everything apart because I don't know what's binding up here, but our clutch basket sits here. So when I rotate this, don't mind the pedal squeaking, but if I rotate this, clutch basket spins fixed to the crank. So that's okay. Free wheels backwards because of that gear inside the case. But when you rotate, the clutch bell spins perfectly fine. There's no getting around that because pedal shaft, wheel, when the chain's hooked up, everything is rotating together and this spins around. Now, on the inside, we have a star washer that gaps off of the clutch bell. And then our blind star shaft. This should stay stationary. See how the star doesn't move? Hopefully you guys can see this. This is how the starting engager works, but I can spin the crank and the wheel perfectly fine, and this stays stationary. So unless you, if you're pedaling around like a regular bicycle, this is how it will rotate, just like that. So we're good there, still staying stationary the way it's supposed to. Make sure that's in there tight. Still staying safe, stationary. Now, when I put the clutch in, and this should all be lubed up too. Come on. Still good. Notice how the clutch isn't spinning without any pressure. That's what we want. So, why are you fighting me? Everything's good up to that point. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Hmm. Well, now I pickled myself, huh? Time to wrestle this clutch out. So everything is working proper on that until I put the spring and parts in. So the spring's gonna drop here. I wonder if it's just lack of lubrication. If 
that's still good there. Weird, I don't know what caused this. Unless these little bushings are too big. Ah. All right, let's try the snap ring again. Hopefully everything just works since it's bench testing okay. Ooh. Told you. There's always that chance that I might just drop this bike completely. This is so difficult. I wonder. Straight on. I don't know if I'm going to be better off or worse with straight players. Probably better. Now, make the bike stay put. Oh, I'm set up backwards on these anyway. Oh, this is what happens when you are ill-prepared. Seated. Oh. Well, I don't know what happened there. All I did was take it apart and put it back together. Now it's working the way it's supposed to. I don't know if maybe that clutch was in there a little bit crooked or something. But if we look, when I pedal this, it should freewheel and the clutch should rotate around the basket just like that. The only thing I did was pull it apart. I don't know if that... Hmm. Maybe the star washer got hung up somewhere in there, that spacer, because if the spacing's off, sorry, if the spacing's off, it will bind up on you. But now, freewheeling, no clutch, no clutch, no clutch. So we are in full-on bicycle mode, exactly like it's supposed to be. So I'm really confused as to why that did what it did, but no motor engagement. We are spinning free, which is fine. And then this little detent on the lever if I push in on the pressure plate, it will start to drag the clutch onto the basket on the back. It'll lock this uh, the rubber clutch section to the basket, engage the motor, and then you get a whopping 70cc powered Polini motor pulling you along instead of pedaling your behind off. So that was strange. I don't know what happened, but I'm glad it kind of did because that's a useful lesson if anybody's trying to build a Gorelli and can't figure that one out. The other issue, on these stock clutches, when these start drying out, or the little fingers get as brittle as mine were or are missing, when you, a lot of the times you can, t these clutches tend to swell, especially if they didn't run the right type of oil, it's non-detergent 30 weight, typically. As far as I'm aware, this yellow poly bushing clutch material is capable of running pretty much any type of fluid in there. So I've been looking and Eight different ATFs and synthetic mixes allow you to slip the clutch a little bit more on the top end. This, on the other hand, when these get old, they expand and they swell, which means when they swell, they're constantly engaging the clutch. So a lot of the times what will happen is you can have it fire up and run fine, but when you come to a stop, the bike will instantly die. It's because the clutch is dragging and it's locking up the motor. So when you're moving, it's fine, but when you come to a stop, it won't idle because it can't disengage the motor from the drive wheel. So it's like leaving your car in fifth gear and then coming to a complete stop. Um, every time you come to a complete stop, what's gonna break first? Is the torque from the car gonna keep you moving? Or if you completely stop while you're in gear, it's dead, you can't can't stay running if it's locking up on itself. So kind of glad that did happen. Quick little once over on the clutch, but uh, we should be ready to throw a gasket on here and put this side cover on now. So let me clean up a little and find all my gaskets. It's been a while since we've been out here. This is kind of a redundant step, but since I have not actually had all of this mocked up in a very long time, I don't remember which bolts were which. And I thought I bought new bolts, but maybe that was just for the case. Oh well. 
this will work for now. Um, I grabbed all of the flathead M6s. We do not have a gasket on here right now. I just want to make sure I have the right hardware here. Kind of a silly step, but I'd much rather do this before I have gasket material on everything. See, I think these are too long. Man, this thing's gonna be fancy though, huh? I'm guessing that these are not the right ones. This might be the other side. And this is why we test them. What do I got in here? One, two, three, four, five. Huh, just too, a little bit too long. So, these little guys in the back might actually be the right ones that I actually need. We'll find out here in a minute. Yeah, these are too long. All right, find some hardware. I found all the right hardware. It's confusing because there are all these flathead ones on both sides for the ignition cover and for the case bolts that we swapped out with Allen keys. So basically, I kind of just threw them all in the box knowing that these are for the case and for the side covers, thinking it would be a little bit easier. The clutch side uses shorter hardware. I'm not going to give you a measurement because I have no idea. They measure them in millimeters anyway. What are those? But the short ones go here. The longer ones that I had out, these are actually for the clutch cover side because it sticks out a little bit farther. But these will be the correct ones. And we don't have a gasket in here. So we got all six bolts laid out proper. I do have the gasket, but that's why I wanted to do a quick mock-up. And now I thought about just pulling this off, putting the gasket in, buttoning up the side and calling it done. But I need to re-gasket everything on this motor. So I think we're going to do a dry assembly first on everything, make sure everything is working, and then pull it apart for final gaskets and torques and all that other stuff. Like I said, top end's missing the piston, so that's gotta come out anyway. I need the intake gasket, I need the spacer plate on the carb. There's a lot of quick removal stuff, but while it's sitting here, now we are in bicycle mode. Pull this lever. You can hear that piston banging around in there motor mode and that only needs to go on for starting so when you pull this lever in it engages the pushes the pressure plate in locks that clutch against the bell engages the motor and it starts once it's fired up and running you don't have to hold that lever or anything it's just in motorized mode once you get it fired up so that's kind of where we're going to stop on that side and then if we come over here Maybe we'll drop the stator in, and then we can start running the wires. When we blasted all of this apart, basically everything is tucked underneath. It's got a million covers on it. So we have the front fender still has to go on. That big triangle piece on the left side of the seat goes through this general area, kind of covers up all of this right here. And the tank runs up here. The seat goes back here, obviously, but... When we start putting all these side covers on, I lose access to most of this. So we got the chain and sprocket done. Wiring's gonna come up here. There's that purple tray somewhere that's gonna cover up this whole section once you get it all back together. So I think what I'm gonna do is drop the stator in and then maybe we can lay out the wires to the taillight and the headlight before we start buttoning up a bunch of this. I don't know. Let me get the stator in and then drop that little clip in on this side. So still a points plate. You got your lighting coil, you got your ignition points. And this should go in nice and easy. It's got a nice little grommet here for the wiring. There, and didn't I mark this? I could have sworn I drew a mark on here somewhere, but that's okay. Oh yeah. There is one. We blasted the case, so it's hard to see, but there's a line right here and a scribe line right here on the points. So it might not be perfect, but that's at least close enough to be in the general ballpark of where we were. And we will have to mess with the timing quite a bit 
when we go to do final assembly on this, especially with the kit and the carb and all of that other stuff. Two strokes, especially timing is critical. You run them too advanced on the timing. They put in way more heat into the motor and if your jetting is off, if your timing is off aggressively and you're not kind of monitoring temperatures, they're a little less forgiving than a four stroke would be. They can run really good and a lot of the times the best that they're ever running or the best that they have ever run happens right before they go boom. That's what I need to add is the temp key. Let me grab a magnet screwdriver. This is annoying. The points wiper is kind of in the way over here too. All right, so here's my scribe line. Here's the scribe line on the case. So I think we're in pretty good shape right there for now. our fancy ignition with all three wires, two of which we actually need. I'm not going to put the magneto cover on yet, just because I'm not sure on that Woodruff key section and I'm trying to time it. Oh, no, I lied. We got lucky. The Woodruff key stayed in the ignition. I don't know if you guys can see that. I thought we lost it, but see that little shiny bit? So we do have a Woodruff key. This can go back on. Winning. Which is fine. I'm just going to leave that wedge right in there where it's supposed to be. I'll wrestle the ignition back on here. Because if it's stuck in that groove, as long as I can get this to line back up, it should, in theory, only drop in where it's supposed to be. Maybe. Oh. One issue with the Gorelli stuff, the uh, Woodruff keys on these are tiny. So if you need to get one or order one, I would recommend getting a couple. That's not gonna work. Unfortunately, we need to pound this out without breaking it. Tiny, tiny little thing. Can you guys see how little this is? So, I'll try and drop this into the crank. Hopefully I don't lose it like I just said not to. All right, that's in on the crank. Hopefully that's down low enough, but we're at 12 o'clock here. Doubt it. Oh, oh first try. It actually worked. Sometimes you get lucky, I guess. So we got a washer in here. It's stuck in the CDI. It stayed with it. So now, we get to drop this nut back on. 12 mil. Most of the time, these are much bigger than that. Hmm. Hear what's happening? Trying to tighten this down and it's just spinning the crank. That's not what we want. So I might need to put a piston stop in there or... How else can I do that? Hold the clutch and the brake at the same time, which we don't really have set up. Which is okay. So this will stay loose for now. We'll snug this down at a later point. Uh, there's not enough resistance right now to crank on this and I don't want that connecting rod banging around inside the cylinder on its own right now. Maybe a little pulse. There we go. I think it was just hanging up on the threads. So we're good. Now this will direct drive spin the motor because we're literally just turning the crank here. It basically bypasses that clutch engager on the other side. So 
We are looking pretty good. I think that's probably going to be the stopping point for a little bit. While I figure out if I'm going to do wiring and cables and all that other stuff to try and get the rest of this solidified. I've got the tail lights set up kind of on here. I left it loose because this has to come off, but there's a wiring pin out that drops into here. So basically, and we only need one. We're only running a power back there. And I think I ordered the voltage regulator. Two strokes, these are typically, if you notice, it should say somewhere on here, um, it's like a six volt system. If you have a kit and your bike is making a bunch of revs and you do not put in a voltage regulator, your lights get brighter as the revs go up. Well, you start spinning high enough revs, those lights no longer stay together. They blow up bulbs and all of that fun stuff if you don't run a voltage regulator. So I do have one of those coming. Two wire, simple deal. You just run your hot lead into the one side from the magneto to the regulator and then your output is regulated voltage. And then I just typically run 12 volt bulbs anyway. So that's kind of where we're at. Clutch stuff is done. Motor's relatively done minus gaskets. So this will come off, but I'll do that all of that at once, just in case I need to adjust anything on this front. Gives me a little bit more room. So we're, we're getting there. But clutch side, let's see what else. That's it before I start rambling anymore. Thanks for watching. We'll be back out here probably later on today because I really want to get farther on this. We'll see you tomorrow.